This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Coming in at level 1, we have the Rainbow Table Attack. Rainbow tables are collections of pre-computed hash values used to crack password hashes. Hashing is when a hash function transforms a plain text password into a thick sized string of characters that appears random. That's how passwords are typically stored in databases. And an attacker can use a rainbow table to try to reverse that process to direct them to the original password. If a hash in a database matches a hash value that's already pre-computed in their table, they can quickly retrieve the original password. I want to make it clear that rainbow tables aren't just simple hash tables. They're unique because of their use of reduction functions. Reduction function simply converts a hash into a potential plain text password, which we can then rehash to create a chain of passwords and hashes. These chains are added to the table to improve the likelihood of cracking a password. And the term rainbow in rainbow tables, by the way, refers to the use of different colors used to represent various hashing and reduction functions and steps. There's a lot more that goes into them, and as impressive as they are, they became mostly obsolete once their kryptonite came along. <laughs> Salting involves adding a random string to passwords before they undergo hashing, ensuring each password is unique, even if multiple people use the same password. Because rainbow table attacks work under the assumption that a text string has one specific hash value, salting renders them useless. Level 2. Dumpster Diving Attack This is one of the least effective ways to try cracking someone's password because it's limited by physical access and relies on poor physical security practices. You'd have to hope that someone actually wrote down their password and then carelessly threw it away where it's accessible. In today's digital age, important credentials are rarely discarded so openly, and many people and businesses use shredders to dispose of sensitive documents. Realistically though, an attacker using this method would most likely be in search of digital waste such as hard drives, USB drives, and other storage devices, where they can then use data recovery tools to retrieve sensitive information. So before throwing your computer away, always make sure that your sensitive data has been properly deleted. This will always be the best method. Level 3. Shoulder Surfing Attack Shoulder surfing happens when an attacker tries to steal data by watching over a victim's shoulder as they use their device in public. Dude. This is another not so good way of trying to crack someone's password as it is limited by physical proximity and visibility. Even if the attacker possessed godlike vision, password masking is still a thing. Passwords appear as dots or asterisks for this very reason. The biggest factor in falling prey to this type of attack is simply being in public. There's rarely any reason for a stranger to be this close to you in public, unless you're taking the train in Tokyo during rush hour. And if that's the case, having your password stolen should be the least of your worries. Level 4. Hardware Keylogger Attack Hardware keyloggers are small physical devices designed to record every keystroke made on a computer keyboard. Cyber criminals can hide these devices within computer cables or inside a USB adapter, making them difficult for the victim to detect. Once installed, they run in the background tracking everything you type, such as credit card information, websites you visit, and passwords you use. What makes them effective is that they're not reliant on software running on the system, which makes them undetectable by typical antivirus or anti-malware programs. However, because you need physical access to the victim's computer to install the keylogger, attackers do not commonly use it in cyber attacks. Yes, software keyloggers do exist, but attackers commonly deploy them through phishing methods, which is an entirely different kind of attack. Level 5. Simple Brute Force Attack a simple brute force attack occurs when a hacker uses a password cracking program to process an astounding number of possible combinations of alphanumeric characters until the correct one is found. This trial and error tactic can be very time consuming, especially with longer and more complex passwords. This is why nowadays most websites ask you to add special characters and numbers to your password. This makes brute forcing stupidly slow. For reference, it would take approximately 7 quadrillion years to crack this password using a brute force algorithm. Although this sort of attack can be very slow, it tickles my brain to think that, given enough time and resources, a brute force attack could theoretically crack any password known to man. It's like Batman with prep time. Unstoppable. Another fun thought is imagining you're incredibly lucky in cracking the password on your first try. Although super unlikely, the chances aren't zero. If you want to dive deeper into how probability works, I'd recommend checking out Brilliant.org, today's sponsor. Brilliant is a learning platform that offers engaging courses on a variety of topics within math and science. It's a great way to sharpen your mind and learn new skills. They start you with the basics and build up your understanding step by step, using interactive problem solving methods that are proven to be six times more effective than boring lecture videos. Not only does Brilliant help you understand specific topics, but it also builds your critical thinking skills through problem solving and not memorizing. 
And lastly, Brilliant also helps you develop a powerful daily learning habit. With lessons that you can complete in just a few minutes a day, it's perfect for both personal and professional growth. It's a mindful alternative to mindless scrolling. One of their latest pieces of content is an introduction to probability. This course is perfect for learners of any level to start or continue learning data analysis. With a fully built out suite of new content from Bayes' theorem to multiple linear regression, to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Ardens or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Level 6. Man in the Middle Attack a man-in-the-middle attack occurs when a hacker secretly steals data by intercepting communications between two parties who believe they are communicating directly with each other. The hacker can either eavesdrop on or impersonate one of the parties, making it seem like a normal exchange of information is happening. But it's not. Man-in-the-middle attacks come in many different forms. There's Wi-Fi eavesdropping, art poisoning, DNS spoofing, and many more. You would expect that a lot of these methods wouldn't work with today's level of security such as encryption and signed certificates, but they're very much still a thing. What's not a thing anymore, however, is the name Man in the Middle Attack. It has been rebranded as Adversary in the Middle or On Path Attack because, and I, I didn't even know this, but apparently, Man in the Middle Attacks can actually be performed by a woman. Level 7. SQL Injection Attack SQL injection is an attack that relies on a web vulnerability that's been known for over 20 years. And yet, it remains one of the most widely exploited flaws in web applications today. It's like discovering that people are still hiding their spare house keys under the doormat. So SQL, or SQL, simply put, is a language that lets you interact with a website's database. When you sign into a website, the system executes SQL commands to verify whether your username and password match the records stored in the database. The issue comes when the website's code does not properly separate user input from its SQL queries. When that happens, attackers can inject their own SQL commands into the text field, allowing them to read, edit, and even delete everything in a database. And it's funny because this attack can easily be prevented if developers sanitize their code. Level 8. Dictionary Attack In a dictionary attack, a hacker systematically tests every word in a list of common passwords and basically any word from a dictionary to guess a user's password. This method is more effective than a pure brute force attack due to the fact that people tend to use overused and easy to remember passwords. Here's a list of the top 20 most used passwords in the United States, according to NordPass. And they're exactly what you would expect. You have the typical numeric sequences such as 12345, password, and sh shitbird, what the f***? Dictionary attacks do have their shortcomings. Again, most websites today require that passwords include a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters, and also meet a minimum length. They're basically trying to make your password more complex so that there's a lower chance of it being on an attacker's list. Level 9. Credential Stuffing Attack Credential stuffing is a type of brute force attack in which attackers use already leaked passwords to gain access to users' accounts. What makes this attack so dangerous is that it relies mostly on the fact that many people reuse the same password across various applications. Reusing the same password across multiple sites can turn a single security breach into a domino effect, compromising all of your accounts at once. So treat your passwords like condoms. Only use them once. If you don't, you might end up with an unexpected user on your family plan. Funny enough, credential stuffing attacks have a very low rate of success, about 0.1% according to Cloudflare, but the sheer volume of credential collections that's available makes this attack worth it. If an attacker has 1 million sets of credentials, this could yield around 1,000 successfully cracked accounts. And lastly, level 10, phishing attacks. Phishing occurs when a threat actor baits an individual into revealing sensitive information. I've placed this at number 10 because it's an attack that best capitalizes on human error, which is the most challenging vulnerability to mitigate. Also, phishing can set the stage for launching further potent attacks such as deploying malware. Phishing attacks come in a variety of different flavors. However, the most common is arguably email phishing. These emails may contain deceptive links that directs you to a malicious website that can steal login credentials or attachments that, when open, can install malware on the user's device. The effectiveness of this attack depends largely on the target's level of awareness and intelligence. If you can slow down and think before clicking on a suspicious link, you're already significantly reducing your risk of falling victim to it. Alright, I've been Ardens and I know jack shit about cybersecurity. Take care.